curse. <laughs> now the guys next door are going, what the heck is going on over there? Hey guys, um, before I get started, okay, I have a, you know, presentation of, you know, what the heck a advanced persistent threat is anyway. However, after I made this one, I made a different one for a different project to talk about research that came out over the last three or four months about the Russian hack. See? So show of hands, which one would you rather hear? The generic APT talk? Or how about the Russians? Well, let's talk about the Russians. Okay. That was the correct answer, by the way. Got to get the right screen up now. So are you seeing this or not seeing this? Okay, let me change the resolution so it's at least okay to look at. Stand by. Okay. So, some of you might be in pollsters class, some of you are definitely not in pollsters class, so you might have heard most of this. This thing is literally changing every damn day I wake up. One day, definitely the Russia. Next day, definitely the CIA. Next day, uh, we don't know anymore. Okay. So, I'm not trying to convince you that this is the Russians at all. I'm just pointing out, this is the information that they're giving us. Somebody trying to come in? Come on in, victims. I wonder where you were. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, not trying to convince you. But I'm going to point out when I show you, you know, talk about some of this. The information that they're giving us is just plain damn confusing. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Next question, guys. Okay. Very good. Yep. I'm Bill Barnes. I'm one of the IT managers here at Bloomsburg. Blah, 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 blah. We're, we have a short talk. Let's move on. Okay. So here is half of the last presentation. So what is advanced persistent threat? Okay. These are planned, coordinated attacks. These aren't just drive-by you know, malware, and these just aren't, you know, cute little, oh, hey, whoa, somebody clicked on the phishing link. Let's do something with them. They are looking at you as an organization. Close the door here because I yell too. Um, so you are the target. They actually pick the target and say, we are going after X today. Most recently, it's been started with spear phishing campaigns. Why? Because our users still click on the links. It's 2017, guys. We gotta work on getting the users to stop clicking on the links. Um, a couple years ago, they would just buy ads in the web, you know, in Google and stuff to have you know, do drive-bys, but they weren't getting the targets they were looking for. So now they're really fo focusing in on spear phishing. Um, <laughs> these tacks use all mutations. So what they do is, is that once they get a set tool set that they like, that's working, it's getting results, they constantly change it so that signature-based defenses are useless. They are always looking on data, and they're always seems to be looking for keeping access. So if they don't find anything useful today, they want to stick around to see how they look in three months, six months, 12 months. There's been cases where it's been years they're hanging around in a network just waiting for something use, interesting to pop up. So <clears throat> this is not all doom and gloom. Well, it is, but not quite all doom and gloom. I always like to give a little bit of, you know, advice on, you know, how do you prevent this kind of stuff? Number one is train your users not to fall for the fishes. And that is really, really, really hard. Um, some automation in your network to look at behavior tracking. Case is, I got some automation here. It is not unusual for Bill Barnes to be encrypting files. It is very unusual for places that I thought was encryption to be using encryption. Therefore, it always flags as something unusual, suspicious. Go check it out. Um, watch your outbound traffic, specifically outbound DNS queries. 
The one we caught last year, we only caught because we saw him making the calls to the same DNS host. It was random strings dot, you know, someplace on the internet dot org. And it was just over and over and over and over. Well, here they are sending data through the DNS queries. Um, keep up to date on current trends and threat landscapes. Learn to use intelligence. If you partner, and I'm not going to tell you which ones to partner with because they all have bonuses and negatives. If you partner with the right one, you're going to get information where they say, hey, we have indicated that somebody's poking around looking at you specifically. Likewise, they're going to show you things that are going on on Mac, so you kind of get an idea of scope and scale. And unfortunately, back to the points are the key. Um, all, you, know, you can make all your network secure and all your servers secure, but the users are clicking on the links, therefore endpoints are the key because that's where they start this whole thing. <clears throat> so some quick advice to keep in mind as we're going through here. Uh, don't panic. <laughs> it's very, very, very easy to panic. Don't panic. Um, nothing is ever as it seems, as I found now six or seven times as we've gone through all this stuff. Bias. Be aware of your own bias. I keep seeing all the time stuff I did 10 years ago because I'm like, oh, I know this. And they're actually starting to, it looks like some of the, the more skilled actors are layering stuff to kind of hide what's really going on with run-of-the-mill malware. Correlation does not have causation because every time I hear somebody on the TV saying Russians, they're talking about correlation implies causation. But it so be careful of that. Likewise, Occam's razor. Does anyone know what Occam's razor is? Yes. Whatever is the least amount of assumptions is probably it. And that's how this usually boils down this stuff. Okay, next trivia question. I always thought something was fundamentally wrong with the universe. Name the book. Close, but not. You're even closer. It's one of the series. Restaurant at the end of the universe. How's that for obscure? So, I get daily summaries from threat intelligence that takes about 25, 30 minutes to read. And it's, you know, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, you know, saying, go read more, go read more, go read more. You could spend your entire day reading threat intelligence. I actually got this one, and I didn't click on the link to read it. I just remember, oh, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, CrowdStrike's looking at the DNC. Uh, Dmitry, who runs CrowdStrike, is a former uh, Russian citizen. So I'm like, oh, okay, he's, you know, he's looking stuff. That was June 15th. Nobody talked about it. Nobody went in, did any follow-ups. Nobody did anything. So next thing I saw, hey, poor Seth got killed in D.C., one of the sysadmins for the DNC. Okay, so he was killed by 10th. And I'm like, okay, that started, that made some news for a little bit. And I'm like, story over. 58% of the time, insider threats. In my mind, I'm like, okay. He you know, gave all that stuff to WikiLeaks and whatever was going on. And even today, or actually last year, it's still in the, the mid-50s for when they investigate these leaks, it all ends up being an insider threat. So back to that training your users is really important. So in my narrow of a mind, I wrote this whole thing off in July. So how did the way I get these security tips from the Department of Land Security through email. I get, you know, like I said, I get a lot of email about this. This one woke me up. It's like why are they talking about securing voter registration data? This stuff's like always publicly discoverable. It's very, very unusual. Then we had Trump apocalypse. Who here is a survivor now? Welcome to the post-Trump apocalypse world. Okay, next. <laughs> so I'm sitting at home between Christmas and New Year's, and through the phone, and I get this one. Okay, here's a, a, a joint white paper that came out, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And I'm like, what the heck is this thing? And I always pick on this one. Yeah. So, 
right off the bat, online was flipping out because it's TLP white. Um, I don't have a security clearance. I've never seen a document that wasn't TLP white. So that's like, okay, whatever. But what joint, what really was like first alert for me was this first part. Four is provided as is for informational purposes only. No implied warranty, blah, 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 legal cover. I have never seen that disclosure before in anything they, they've shipped out. So, okay, that's really weird. And I start reading through the thing and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, pretty good. Hey, oh, wait. That's a slide from Firefly from last year. Okay. <laughs> did, did they FireEye in? They say copyright FireEye? Like given to us by FireEye? That's suspicious. So I kept going through this thing, reading through it, and once again, you know, another another FireEye slide. And then they gave alternative names. So okay, now we're now we're pretty good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cake, Dukes, 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 Dukes and Bears, Dukes and Bears. That's stuff that's usually 28 and 29. But then they put in things like power. Well, no kidding. Twain 64 to DLL. No kidding. That's just standard stuff that I see from other people all the time. They're, but they're attributing it to this one group when I know other groups are using this stuff. Very, very unusual. Then they gave me the most useless Yara signature in all of history. I'm like, okay. That particular Yara signature, I went out on, you know, a few sites I go to. You can buy this malware for, you know, five bitcoins. Or half a Bitcoin. And I'm like, okay, this is just generic off the shelf stuff. That's really weird. So then we're going through here, and you know, and then then all of a sudden it, you ever have a, a project where you're working on a group project and you have three different people writing stuff, and all of a sudden you have a section there that doesn't match the other two people section? That's what we're starting to run into here. Oh, here's some best practices. Make backups. What the heck does that have to do about the Yara signature you threw out? Oh yeah, you know, here's vulnerability scanning patching, whitelisting, instant re that has nothing to do with everything they talked about in the previous document. And it goes on like this for the rest of the day. I'm like, really? Understand firewalls. Really? Thanks, guys. <laughs> so that really, you know, got my attention. So then the next thing that happened is early January we had some intelligence briefing. They gave you the declassified online version, <coughs> which, you know, once again, was pretty interesting. But they cut out pretty much everything that actually says, we, you know, they use we assess, we judge, very, very, you know, generic-y language in here. And they go through this whole thing. And I'm following along. I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning some of this stuff. Um, the one that really struck out at me, I want to jump here because it's, you know, pretty interesting. This is all out there so you guys can go look at it later. It's fun. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're going through there and they start talking about Russian, Russia Today TV channel. And I'm like, this isn't, you're now talking about something else again. This doesn't make any sense. But they're saying because because they run shows, you know, say the message that they want to say, it's obviously part of the cyber campaign. So no wonder our senators are so damn confused. It makes pretty, this is the stuff they're given. Good, I'm still doing good on time. So we're off the bat a few days later. I got a webinar invite for uh, Robert M. Lee. Does anybody know who he is? Follow him on Twitter, for the love of God. Um, he's one of the SANS instructors, plus he has a consulting business, plus, 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 plus. He actually did a webcast analysis, analyzing that report that came out on December 28th, ripping it apart. Webinar. Um, if I had more time, I'd actually go into the, some of the slides, because he does a really nice couple slides where he talks about how hard attribution really is. The piece of the puzzle that we're missing on attribution is, is they have no secondary authenticator telling us that this is real. And that always ends up being spies. So that part's course classified, so of course we don't have that. But he basically goes through the whole thing and talks about how bad the report is. 
And it's a really, you know, like I said, it's an hour webinar. Go sign up, watch it, it's a good one. So I'm not gonna lie to you. I a lot of research I get is from FireEye because they're very good about sharing. So when this came out, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do the webinar. Webinar was really good. You have an archive, you can go sign, watch up. Same deal. They go through the thing. I gotta find that one here. So this one was very interesting. Once again, they didn't try to prove it was the Russians, but they talk about things that they've found as they're going on. And so they believe the DNC was hacked by the, the Russians. And it's based on when they, the things that they found as they were um, investigating the World Anti-Doping Agency. Does anyone know last year the Russians would have been in the World Anti-Doping Agency? Go ahead. Yes. And what, what started showing up on the internet in September? Evidence from the World Doping Agency that they were letting other countries get medical exceptions for therapeutic use for the same stuff they were banning the Russians for. So <laughs> as I was watching this whole thing, I'm like, okay. So I have a few friends that work at Mandiant and FireEye, and they specifically all sent this to me, like, you gotta, you gotta go through this one. I'm like, okay. But basically, what they found is, they did up there, they did the exact same thing on the DNC, from what they, what evidence they were given. They didn't do the, the DNC investigation, uh, another company did. So, once again, they came out with another enhanced analysis of Grizzly Step, February 10th. Now this one was good. This one they actually sat down as the you know as a team and actually you know worked things out. And this time they actually cited stuff so that you know where this came from and where there's different information. You can go look up the validate what they're talking about in this report. And they go on and on and on and on. This time, they actually gave us YARA rules that are more specific to the of trying to get index strings and that kind of stuff to try to follow as it mutates. Um, the good news is I took all these YARA rules and picked a few things that I was worried about and a few known bad actors. None of them hit here at least, um, but I have, I have read things on Twitter from people saying that they've had hits on this. So that's very interesting. And then once again, this is another one. The other thing too is this one's much longer. It went from you know 13 pages to 56 pages because they actually packed useful information in here. So this one's actually a better one. So now I'm starting to feel something. Then Robert Lee said, hey, let's do another webinar talking about that one. And that's another one I, I recommend you go watch on, you know, as you have time. And he basically comes to the same conclusion that the stuff released is a lot better this time but they still have a few things that he would have wished they did. <clears throat> WikiLeaks! I actually practiced that one. Um, everything was fine, and I was... And then, then, then Vault 7 came out. Um, did anybody look at Vault 7 yet? Um, I have slides out of order. I can't stop reading WikiLeaks. I haven't seen it in like two weeks now. Anyway, the interesting part for the, this talk is this little tidbit here. They actually had a code name group in there where they were actually faking and true to make it look like somebody else. Thanks, guys. Now you made everything that much harder. Um, at this point, we know that they were stealing techniques from other groups. We don't know what groups they were. I'm hoping we're going to get a WikiLeaks where they actually say it was APD28, because that helps a little bit, because right now we don't know which ones they're talking about. And now everyone, you know, freaking out over Mac firmware. Um, 
<coughs> yeah, I can't stop reading. So I updated this slide real time. <laughs> Um, I still think it's possible because in my mind, the Russians hacking the DNC is the least amount of get, you know, assumptions that you have to have. Because even, even with the CIA, what does the CIA gain from hacking the DNC? Nothing. You know, maybe they didn't like her. Maybe they were trying to worry about pipelines, you know. So you look at a lot of instability in the world. It's around right now. It seems to be around natural gas pipelines. All these hot spots: Syria, Ukraine, Turkey, Israel, Greece, um, the Baltics. It's all about getting natural pipe to Europe, where it's the number one consumer of natural gas. So maybe, maybe not. Um, I was pretty sure of it until the Umbridge stuff came out. But once again, once we get more information from WikiLeaks, maybe that's going to change anyway. Um, one thing that was interesting during this whole thing with the, with the DNC specifically, there was nothing presented about anyone else being on the network. Now, a lot of times, if you're vulnerable to one group, you're vulnerable to the other. So a lot of times when we look at this, we find two or three actors working at the same time, and they kind of lay low and do their own thing and leave each other alone. Um, if there was no one else in there, that's really worth mentioning, because that means somebody actually was a, kicking other people off. So it's worth mentioning, and no one mentioned any documentation that came out. And links here, there's hundreds of doubt articles out there. So if you do a Google search on, you know, was it the Russians and that kind of stuff, you're going to get hundreds of hit. Two links that I thought were pretty good um, was this one. Counterpunch article, although th those articles are usually kind of goofy, but this one was pretty good. And, you know, Ron Paul sends me email every day. I got yesterday, well, even they're doubters. Um, and the, what's cut off the screen is, you know, we still need more information on this one. Any questions? As of this moment in time at, you know, 10.52 a.m. Saturday, I still think so. And it's only because it's the least amount of assumptions. And that's a whole Occam's razor, razor kind of thing. Um, I have yet to see any conclusive proof, and I have to see, I have yet to see any conclusive non-proof. And I'm always on the absence of, uh, absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. That was my favorite quote from the Bush era. Anything else? Okay. How many here are still undergrads? Okay. Here's the pitch. If you're here today, you are in a unique position as you're making career planning choices. Please think, consider the information security realm. Um, I stole this from SANS. I put it out on Twitter a couple months ago. We still need people, we need skills, we need manpower. Just as you're making career goals, think about it, because the more eyes we have looking at this stuff, the better everything's going to get. So I always you know, like to throw that out there, because a lot of times you, you go through your classes and stuff, and you're not sure what you want to do, pull stuff out, I'm not going to do that. Because I think you all, but especially if you came here, Yes? Um, I did a Yara search on from the command line. And so I put all those into a Yara file, rules file, and I just did a command line and I scraped a couple machines. SMB, you know, I SMB mounted a few machines I wanted to look at and just sure they traverse them that way. Yeah. That? No question. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? All right, I'll let you I'll let you go now.